From the Holy Trinity Church in Inwood, New York City, welcome to Inwood Artworks On Air. It's where you meet the musicians, filmmakers, writers, theater makers, and artists of all stripes who make their home in what we affectionately call Upstate Manhattan. I'm your host, Aaron Sims, and this is Live and Local. It's our podcast dedicated to showcasing the musicians of Upper Manhattan. We talk to them about what they do, and best of all, listen to them play live in one of our favorite local venues. Today, we are excited to speak with pianist and composer Justin Piper. Justin is a New York City-based pianist, vocal coach, organist, conductor, and educator. As a performer, he has appeared in major venues across the country and abroad, including guest appearances on the Discovery Channel, WNYC, WNPR, and performances across the country, including Carnegie Hall and the Bruno Walter Auditorium. He has a solo piano album called Humoresque and is the pianist and conductor for many opera companies and festivals. Justin is a member of the Washington Heights-based Luminae Trio and is currently the music director and principal organist at Holy Trinity Episcopal Church in Inwood. In addition, he is on faculty as associate adjunct professor of music at LIU Brooklyn Rock Nation School of Music, Sports, and Entertainment. We're thrilled to have him here play live for you today. Ladies and gentlemen, Justin Piper. Thank you. 
Justin, it's good to see you. Nice work. Thanks for being on the show. Thank you. Nice to be here. You bet. You bet. So can you please tell our listeners what you just played for us? That was Beethoven's 30th Piano Sonata in E Major, Opus 109. Uh, it's uh, a collection. Or it's one of the last three sonatas that he wrote uh, for the genre. And um, they all three of them were really uh, groundbreaking, um, each in their own way. Uh, that was just the first movement, so it's just a little taste. Uh, but um, what's very interesting about that is how compact it is uh, and how um, uh, it ties itself together with uh, really two separate tempi inside of it. So Beethoven was already exploring kind of groundbreaking things with changing the actual tempo markings in it. So that's kind of one of the cool things in that. Very much so, very much so. And uh, yeah, his 30th. <laughs> yeah, 30th, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, 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 and one of his last. So it's, it's kind of amazing to, too, um, I mean, we're not going to, we don't have a great diaspora of Beethoven listened to on this program all the time, though. But uh, it is amazing to see, like, the breadth of his work and how it changed. Oh, one hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. And, and what's interesting, too, is, is that a lot of late Beethoven sounds new even, you know, being hundreds of years old. And so I, I think, like, that's a real testament to music that can still be around and still sound fresh. Yeah, absolutely. Well, if one had to generally classify your work, um, I think you could say it, it, the classical field as a solo performer and also as a collaborative pianist. You've done a lot of work in that field. Um, were you always called to classical music, or did you follow other genres that paved your way to it? Uh, it's interesting. I started out listening to classic rock before I even played piano. So I was, uh, you know, buying albums, uh, usually because my friends liked them, like The Who and Pearl Jam and that sort of thing. And then um, I started kind of picking up the piano myself and uh, ended up auditioning for this teacher when I was around 11 or 12. Uh, her name was Vlada Henderson. And I remember my first lesson I had with her, uh, it was a two and a half hour long lesson. <laughs> yeah, and this is me, you know, trying to play chopsticks and fur release, you know, just the first part. Uh, so uh, that really kind of, uh, it was a whiplash, but um, I think that that instilled this kind of um, discipline and then eventual love <laughs> for classical music. And um, that kind of stuck with me. So I would say definitely classical is my bread and butter. Um, and it, definitely my first love, but not my only. Yeah, because you have much appreciation um, around and... Um which also I think may have been uh, curious because, you know, you had this enforcement, but you had this love of the, of the classic rock and uh, contemporary. <laughs> so we say classical, yes, but which classical? Right. Find out, folks. There you go. Um, and uh, you choose. On what day, actually? Uh, <laughs> so what encouraged you to start? That, that like, your love for the contemporary uh, genres help you start, um, give you uh, the encouragement to start composing? Uh, yes. I think that uh, in some ways the... Um, I, I almost had it in, you know, delineated in two separate parts of my brain. So like there was one part where I was the classical musician and then the one part where it was like not really serious. And I think like later on in my life, I realized that they're not separate. Yeah. Um, so that, that, that they are one in the same. Um, but that was, uh, I was very much brought up like you, you studied classical music and then uh, the popular music was more just you kind of screwing around. And there's a certain rigor like applied to classical and then yeah and then if anything after a certain date and time well after modern I would say after the modern age we'll say and modern now is 100 years ago right for us right um which is crazy to think about I guess I'm getting old uh but <laughs> but uh but but yeah not as taken seriously and there's uh the, the free form um reminds me of the uh the scene in Amadeus when um uh Count Orsini Rosenberg says to um, a young Mozart, "Too many notes." Uh, you know, right, it's like, right, right, it's right. like you upstart. You know, you're breaking form. Uh, yeah, one hundred percent. You know, and what's actually a great reference in that, you know, in, in that movie is that Mozart was kind of similar to a lot of these groundbreaking artists today. Uh, Absolutely. You know that he he was messing with it, yeah. messing with you know what, what was standard, what what people thought was normal music. Um, you know, the too many notes, that was the marriage of Figaro, which yeah. now is like a standard part of our repertoire. It's probably happening somewhere in the world right now. Right, exactly. Yeah. So I, I think like that's actually a, a testament. And this is kind of what I was trying to get at is that I used to think of it as being separate, but maybe it's, it's the New York 
thing that happened where I I realized that the it, it's just as hard to create a, a rock album as it is to create a symphony. It's just just different tools and different muscles used. There's a certain pretentiousness too. I think goes away from that too yes. in New York as well. Like, yes. You, like, and, and I think it's funny. There's a lot of people who are from other places. You're from somewhere else. I'm from somewhere else. Right. Um, but we've been here for a very long time, so I think part of that pretentiousness is not part of who we are. Uh, right. But right. Uh, and I'll be the first to admit it. Uh, but uh, I, but I think there's also the doors open for new like the new ideas and the new I- and, and and how to flex those ideas. Yeah. Which leads me to talk to you about your uh, 2019 album Humoresque. Uh, not to be confused with Dvorak for all those you classical other snobs on the other way. Um, and a lot, a lot less parts, by the way, too, probably. But yep. um, uh, so how did that album come about? And uh, I'm just curious. Uh, yeah, I mean, that, that, uh, essentially, you know, as I progressed through my career, there was a lot of ups and downs. And um, I think one of the biggest lessons as a musician that I learned in New York was that um, you have to re- constantly redefine success. So um, I was waiting for a opportunity. And I think at that moment, I... Uh, talked to a friend of mine, Scott Hawkinson, who was part of the Double D Records that helped me with that. And he was like, let's make an album. And so I, I figured if, if, uh, you know, I'm, if I'm going to wait here, I'll wait forever. Mm-hmm. Um, but if I can make my own opportunities, and that was one of them. Uh, so I chose uh, pieces that really spoke to me, but were also uh, ones that I maybe never had a chance to really uh, call my own. And um, so that was uh, two Scriabin uh, works, the fifth Sonata, which is, is just an amazing work, and then his uh, Opus 27 Preludes, uh, and uh, as well as uh, the Schumann Humoresque, mm-hmm. which is what the, the, the CD is right. named after. Um, it's like a 30-minute piece. Yeah, it's massive, yeah. massive. One of the biggest that Schumann wrote. Um, and, and at the end of his like piano uh, era of, of his compositional output, so, um, yeah, so that was a, a process, and it, it taught me a lot that uh, I was mostly a live performer. I didn't do a lot of studio work, so that was my first studio kind of work, and I, uh, I give credit to anyone that has to do a studio recording. It is so much time and effort yeah. and headaches. <laughs> it's a process. It's a process, yeah. yeah. And it's a different kind of process. There's a lot less playing involved than I thought. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You figure you can be there all day playing, and it's actually that it's a lot of hurry up and waiting, like, 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 a, te- like a technical process for a, a live show. Right. 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 A lot of hurry up and waiting. And, um, well, um, have you ever given a full performance of it, like straight through? Oh, yeah. 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 I mean, that, that was like the prep. Gotcha. You know, yeah, definitely. Just curious about the live, like, because you're a live guy. But. Yeah. I mean, the, the, the difference is, I think, you know, nowadays, you know, because we're, we're living in like kind of a, a recording centric, world, uh, everything has to be perfect. Yeah. Right. So in a live performance, um, you don't have time to worry about that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you just have Tell to me, deal with it. <laughs> which is also the blessing and the curse of live right. performance too, I guess. Right. right? So, you know, in, in, it's, it, it's almost like a different sport. Totally. Oh, absolutely. I, I just had a conversation the other day with someone, um, about, uh, you know, what you do um, as far as like submitting films for a film festival. And Mm -hmm. I'm just like, well, better be final cut. And I mean, you would think it's common sense anyway, but you know, it's like, you can't get away with, um, you know, there's this, the whole TikTok and Instagram stories and things like that. Like everyone has a phone. So everyone, I mean, in the truest sense, everyone is a filmmaker in many ways, mm-hmm. or or can record audio in many ways, or is a musician, or a right? musician yeah. in many ways. Because right. literally, because like, literally, your 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 personal media device, I'll call it whatever it is, whether it's an iPad or a phone or whatever. Like, you can have you can make music on that. We were talking about Radiohead off camera earlier, right? And uh, and you know, we both are fans, and uh, you know, they, you know, Johnny Greenwood has done amazing things with just you know whatever he has his hands on, apparently, right? Uh, and so, but. There is a certain, th- it's funny here in 2023, I'll date us on time capsule, there is a threshold, right? There's a threshold of what is acceptable. Yes. Kind of going back, we're talking about Mozart again and talking exactly. about whatever else, like what, what, new, new, what are new forms? What are these forms? Right. Are they acceptable? Are they, will they be acceptable? Right. I mean, you know, after Beethoven's uh, fifth uh, symphony, one of the critics said that, uh, you know, who would listen to this cacophonous music, right? I Apparently mean, we still are. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's why we we don't know his his, his name. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Right. Um, well, the reason why I want to bring up humor is because I feel like uh, I was guessing maybe because of that process, it kind of um, 
you know, being your own thing, uh, even though it wasn't your music, but you have composed other original music and made a demo of this new music during the pandemic. Yes. Um, and so you can tell more us about those sessions over the past two-ish years and what's happening with that music. Totally. So I guess this is kind of all related. Um, yeah. It's like anything that I'm really proud of, I you like create, right? So the first like baby that I had was the Humoresque album, right? Then, uh, then things were going well, seemingly, and then the pandemic hit, and like most, if not everyone that I know, it affected us emotionally, physically, and I think creatively. So th there was like a, a void that happened, um, and we all felt it. So um, when that hit, hit uh, it, it was essentially there was a couple months where, you know, depressed, you know, all my jobs are gone, blah, blah, blah. And then um, I started reaching out to colleagues of mine that I had worked with um, and friends. And uh, one of them was uh, this friend of mine, Ty Collins, who I, we were roommates. Um, we've been music uh, buddies for you know, over 10 years. And uh, we've been always jamming, but never really created anything. So kind of we started meeting every Sunday and we jam. And so uh, that became a thing. And then we started writing our music and putting lyrics to it and having like a whole concept album. So we have, that, that was kind of our pandemic uh, therapy in a way. Um, and uh, may, I, hopefully I'm not segueing into another uh, question, but that was another reason why we started the Luminatrio, yeah. uh, which is a, you know, Inwood and Washington Heights based group that, uh, also, we just started like playing together, mm -hmm. and then it became something. Yeah. Um, so it's 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 very interesting. This kind of ties back to like the whole success thing. Is that the the things that I feel that were s successful like on the resume um, are the ones that were like really came out of nothing. Yeah. Well, just being you have to. I think uh, you kind of said it. Uh, I'm a paraphrase. You said it earlier, but I'm gonna add something to it. It's like you got to create the work you want to see. Mm. Or a quick you want, work you want to hear. Yes, yeah, right. Exactly. You can't sit like, yeah, yeah. You're sitting sitting home and saying, "Darn it, why is anybody hiring me?" <laughs> or right, who's writing who's writing my album for me? No one's going to do that. Right, or even uh, worse, yeah. like going into that toxic place of like, oh, other people shouldn't be getting this. Yeah, and and or, or, and, oh, and then also that committee, and, and I call it the committee in your brain saying, mm -hmm. oh, "You mm -hmm. suck," you know, you right. you don't deserve it either. Right, you know, if they, I imposter mean, syndrome. Well, yeah, and, and who do you think you are? Right, you know? exactly. And, and so I and so I'll. Guys, Justin and I are here telling everybody, you're all worth it. Go do it. Um, totally. 100%. Seriously. If you, if you take one thing away from today's podcast is do that. Be your own Mozart and pull up your boots and say, screw you, Capel Maestro Bono, uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> whoever, Emperor <laughs> Joseph and all the rest of them. Right. Um, uh, well, let's segue here to where we're actually at because um, I think it's just because we're, we're – we're talking about Inwood Washington Heights, and we hope to have you all in the Luminate Trio up at some point. We can do a, another podcast of that, maybe, Amazing. right? But um, to keep it grounded here in Inwood, which I think is awesome, um, and we are Inwood Artworks on air, if y'all didn't know, I'm sure you do, uh, is that, you know, we're all about creating a platform for local artists to do their thing. Um, we, I mean, we kind of, there wasn't anything up here when we started doing all this stuff and, uh, proud to say that, uh, we're just harnessing the power. People were here. We just gave them some place to come and congregate and make things happen. So super proud of what we've done. And, um, and I want to highlight the work you're doing here as MD music director for those of you not down with the lingo, uh, here at Holy Trinity church. Uh, so can you can tell us about the concert series and the programming, uh, that you're curating as music director for this newly renovated space here in Inwood. Yeah, so I am very lucky to have an amazing space here um, at Holy Trinity Church in Inwood. And um, we also have an amazing uh, staff and support system here um, for the like creative arts in, in Inwood. So um, one of my dreams was to curate some kind of performance series. Um, eventually, I, wanted, I, mean, I want to make this huge. So this is just the beginning. Love it. Um, but uh, essentially, uh, you know, my, my idea was uh, we start small. We get a, a group of people that, you know, have a like-minded uh, vision of this mission. And um, essentially what we decided was we're going to do a, um, a series that is free to the public, but it's donation-based, and all donations go back into funding this series. So our first year was our 2022-2023 season, and it was a huge success. We were uh, um, we made more money 
we uh, were able to pay all of our artists uh, and our donation method worked and we've been increasing our numbers in our audience uh, every, every concert. So I'm happy to say that this next season, uh, the 2023-24, we'll have uh, six featured artists and um, one opera and a, uh, also a, uh, a fundraising event and some other events as well. And that is purely funded by the generosity and the community. So, um, you know, we're, we're supplying a place and a platform and then we're able to uh, highlight and um, also just want to take a quick thing about the artists. We're highlighting artists that are local and artists that deserve to be on a platform. And um, so that's, uh, and, it's, and it's also diverse. We don't, we got classical, we got gospel, we got jazz, we got, uh, you know, improv, harp, you know, all, all kinds of things. So um, it's, a, it's a really exciting thing to be part of and it's really great to see that the community has embraced it. And I think it's something we can be proud of. Something for everyone, which is what I, we're all about here at Inwood. So yeah. looking forward to hearing, and when would that announcement be? For um, the so the, well, well the, uh, the, I think the announcement was recent, but I, I don't know if it was official, but uh, we have our first concert of this upcoming season on June 24th. Okay. That's a Saturday. Uh, I believe it's 7 p.m. and it'll be here. Great. So yeah. che you can check out... By um, amazing D.D. Jackson. He's a Grammy uh, award-winning composer and jazz musician and a, a great friend. So, and he lives uh, here yeah. in Edwood? He, he lives in Brooklyn. Well, it's happening here in Edwood. But it is, but it's, <laughs> yeah, but it is happening. Yes, exactly. <laughs> no problem. We like, we, we like people... You know what? It's great people come from Brooklyn. Now they see what we do every time. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> well, well... It's fantastic. Um, and you have a wonderful piano up here, too, as well. Yes. And so let's give the listeners another chance to hear you play it again. Um, what do you have to share with us next? All right. So this is uh, two original compositions. Uh, one is just uh, my own uh, um, it'll, it, uh, instrumental piece called uh, Hit the Ground Running. And then that will lead into this collaboration I had with my, my buddy, Ty Collins. And um, the song is called Again. And we have... Uh, a, a demo out on YouTube if you'd like to hear it with vocals. All right, so here's the instrumental version. Once again, here's Justin Piper.
Well, that was awesome. Justin, it's been a pleasure speaking with you. But before we say goodbye, where can we send people to find out more about your current and forthcoming projects? Awesome. So uh, you can check out my website, uh, justinpiper.com. Uh, I have a YouTube channel. Uh, I think it's Mr. Piper J. Uh, and uh, you can just search Justin Piper. And you can also check out uh, Luminate Trio. We have a, a fun project coming up and a recording project. So we'll I'll keep you updated with that. And um, I will uh, be updating my website with uh, some things that are happening up, up, uh, this upcoming year. So. Awesome. And what about Holy Trinity here? Oh, and yeah, and, uh, you know, I'm here every Sunday playing the organ. And uh, so come, come by. And, uh, you know, we have all kinds of uh, events happening and uh, amazing musicians. So you know, swing by, ch check the website for that as well. And introduce yourself if you're a musician, right? Yes, yeah. C come on in. Say hi. Yeah, there exactly. There you go. There you go. Well, Listeners, you can find the links uh, in the description of this episode, okay? So thanks again, Justin. Thank Great. you so much. You bet. Great to have you here. So once again, this is live and local episode of In What Artworks On Air, where we meet the musicians, filmmakers, writers, theater makers, and artists of all stripes that make their home here in Upper Manhattan. If you have a moment right now, please show us some love and rate and review this podcast on Apple Podcasts. It really helps. Many thanks to... Holy Trinity Church here in Inwood for hosting us, and to HeightsSites.com for local uptown promotional support. You can support On Air and all of our local programming here by making a tax-free donation at InwoodArtworks.nyc backslash donate or via Venmo at Inwood Artworks. Be sure to follow us on social media to keep all that we do, which includes the Inwood Film Festival, Filmworks Al Fresco, Public Art Galleries, live performances, and so much more. And what Artworks On Air is proud to be supported in part by public funds from the New York City Department of Cultural Affairs in partnership with the City Council. And In What Artworks programming is made possible by the New York State Council on the Arts with the support of the Office of the Governor and the New York State Legislature. From the top of Manhattan and the bottom of our hearts, thank you so much for tuning in. This is Aaron Sims for Inwood Artworks On Air.